Our next speaker is Simon Denot. Now, I have always believed, you know, this big you know, action speaks louder than words, but I actually, I actually believe that words are action too. Someone who stands up for somebody may just do it in words. They're not going to knock down a house or something like that. I th I, words are very, very powerful, and we have to be careful of the words we use. And words are action, I, I believe. And I think Simon will, will show that as well, the cultural aspects of the talk. After studying different, after studying and working in different corners of the world, Simon decided that he would come back to Switzerland and be the, he's now the attache for the management team of RTR, the Romance language broadcaster within the Swiss Broadcasting Corporation. He is a strong proponent of multilingualism. He is, he speaks many languages. Uh, he's, he lives in the Romance, he, he lives in Graubünden now. He's going to walk the talk for us tonight. Simon, come on up. Thank you, Jack. Thank nice. you. Great. Am I on? Okay. Selamat malam, semuanya. Nama saya Simon Denot dan saya datang ke sini malam ini untuk membicarakan tentang sebuah hal, sebuah isu yang sangat penting dalam kehidupan saya. Stimmates Donnes, Preziat Seniors, Gottchen Edith, mein Name ist Simon Denot, ich bin Labor pro la Radio Television Schweiz Romancia. Hello for the third time, my name is Simon Denot and I've come here tonight to speak about ideas which I consider to be worth spreading. Ich freue mich sehr, an dieser TEDx-Konferenz eingeladen worden zu sein und ich nutze diese Gelegenheit einerseits, um über die Vorteile von Mehrsprachigkeit zu, zu sprechen et de l'autre côté de dissimuler, de mettre en évidence ce que la SSR, la Société Suisse de Radiodiffusion et de Télévision, fait en ce qui concerne les langues. Ich hoffe auch, dass jeder von euch von euch von Abend äh, etwas lernen kann und dass wir eine leckere Zeit haben zusammen. <lacht> ja, kein Problem. Um, now, Just imagine, if all human beings spoke the same language, wouldn't that be completely boring? Thank goodness this is not the case, and I'm infinitely thankful for it. Now, I would like to start off this presentation <laughs> with uh, the two following quotes. I can see that you've already uh, got to, the, to read them. Now, what's this all about? Languages are an intrinsic part of human culture. In fact, they are the most vibrant expressions of, of human life. However, languages, just like cultures, are equally exposed to racism. They can be typecast and stereotyped. Certain languages are ascribed certain attributes. Some are dominant and strong, and others are weak and uh, considered to be useless or, and not worth pursuing any further. In the end, three ingredients can be identified for the continuity of a language. They are respect, And this is linked to the field of politics and legislation, language laws which, which uplift a certain language to a certain status. Uh, there is interest, interest for the language by both the speakers of the language and those who wish to learn it. And then there's usefulness. Can a benefit be drawn from knowing the language? Now, they are, of course, valid to any language, but they are particularly valid when it comes to languages which are actually endangered, such as Romance, Switzerland's fourth national language. In the few minutes during which I have the floor, my intention is to raise awareness um, of how important it is to keep languages alive and kicking. Let me throw a few questions at you. Um, guess how many languages there are in this world? Don't worry, there's nothing to be uh, won or loose, if you get this one incorrectly. How many? Okay, like an auction. Simon, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, decide. My dear cousin. Okay, let me relieve you here. A little less, uh, a little fewer than that. 7,000 languages, okay? Now, second question. How many of these languages are indigenous to Europe in percent? It's 4%, which is an awful lot, especially when compared to Papua New Guinea, um, which, has, which boasts 820, so 12% of all languages on Earth. Uh, so Europe is pretty much dwarfed there. Now, out of those 7,000 languages worldwide, uh, 2,500 are at risk of extinction. So roughly a quarter of the world's uh, stock of languages, and 500 are already extinct. Now, this is very unfortunate and regrettable, as these expressions of human life are lost forever. 
we never may fa find out certain facts. Uh, one, for example, the, uh, po the majority of the population of Madagascar derives from Asia Pacific, and linguists have, found, have been able to find that out through language. Um, now, of course, languages are in constant motion. Uh, there are some languages which haven't had a great deal of interaction with the outside world, and they've kept a rather simple word structure. There are languages which have which got very pretty in their written form as well, but they uh, have remained somewhat antiquated. And then there are other languages, well, you could name English, for example, which have somehow tried and managed to reconcile the past with the present, um, and also historic developments in a remarkable manner. Now, the English language, for example, boasts 250,000 words, a quarter of a million, uh, and, by, uh, and through that, it's the, uh, the language which has the largest vocabulary in the world. Um, now, the comparison which I made here between languages and, and architecture and, and, and cityscapes is actually quite apt, because um, why would we want to tear down the old state hall in Boston there? Why would we want to destroy Tsug's old town? We invest a lot of resources and money into maintaining buildings and keeping them fit for the modern age. Because we like history and we like historical buildings, we know, we want to know where we come from. And, and, this is, and they help us do just that. Just like we want to preserve biodiversity, we should also be concerned about linguistic diversity. Uh, languages, they meander through life, they transform themselves, but it does take a constant and conscious effort to keep them rich. Now, uh, these efforts, which I've just mentioned, they, of course, they can pay off. One of them um, is the, the neurological advantage. Uh, by knowing a language, uh, you can enhance your cognitive capacity, your cognitive performance. The more languages you know, the, the easier it gets to add another one. Uh, a person's identity, like the sociocultural aspect, is also enriched by knowing a language. Um, it en enables a person to delve into another universe, into another, into another code of human interaction. And last but not least, economic benefits for the individual. Um, the in individual employee can see his market value go up on the market. Uh, and there is an interesting study that in, done in Switzerland in 2010, which revealed that in Suisse Romande, um, those who speak fluent German can earn up to 25% more than their colleagues, and it's 12% if they happen to know um, fluent English. Now, there you go, that's one too many. Um, now, talk about the, let's talk about the advantages at the macro level here. Uh, when fostering national local languages, in the first picture you can see the Académie Française, and as you all know, the, um, the perceived beauty of the French uh, language has helped to define the national psyche, France's national psyche, for centuries. And then the economic benefit, or I should say the benefits uh, when banking on the national languages and the costs when not banking on them. Um, in this all English-speaking world that we're in, uh, transfer costs are very disadvantageous for non-native English speakers, whereas the native English speakers, they uh, are put in a more favorable position. Um, Australia, for example, is, um, or the third largest exporting product is, is academia right after coal and iron and just before tourism. And is it just because the beaches are so nice in Australia? I guess not. A uh, Geneva professor uh, found out that as much as many as 18 billion euros flow towards Great Britain every year simply because Britain is native English speaking. And it's true, a language is always be, will always be spoken best where it is native. I myself, I'm a victim of this voluntary, uh, or a voluntary victim, I should say, of this, of this phenomenon. I chose to do my postgraduate degree in the UK and not uh, stay in Switzerland. Last but not least, there's the political benefit, and I've chosen Belgium to demonstrate this. Um, <laughs> not Switzerland, no, precisely, there we go. Uh, now, Belgium aptly illustrates this. Um, it illustrates when the country's politics go awry. Uh, since its inception, there has been neither respect, interest, nor usefulness for the Flemish language uh, within the Belgian state. French has dominated uh, the country, and uh, now that the economic stakes have turned, the national formula isn't adding up anymore, and the Flemings also rather keen to learn English and not French. So that is another sort of factor if you bank on your national languages. Now, uh, the thing is, you see, um, from the... General, I would now like to get to the more concrete example within Switzerland. And um, given that my professional background, the Swiss Broadcasting Corporation, this is what I'm going to speak about. Um, 
more precisely, I want to deal about how the SBC is dealing with uh, these issues like respect, uh, interest, and usefulness of the languages. Now, even though I'm an employee, an SBC employee, doesn't mean that I'm going to shy away from drawing a, a very critical conclusion. Uh, as you can see, the SBC is made up of four uh, linguistic units, and then the Swiss Info, about which I'm going to speak a little bit more in a, in a minute. Uh, the legal foundation. Here's an overview of a few paragraphs. Uh, they range from the federal constitution to the concession by the federal council. Uh, they, they're pretty um, comprehensive, as you can see. Uh, they, the, the SBC has to cover the official languages. There's even a language uh, program in the English language, and Romance also on the side a little bit. Um, so there's a lot of respect. Uh, also, an overview of the um, television makeup. There are the four units. Uh, the third channel, SRF channel, SF Info, is going to be, uh, become multilingual with repetitions of news shows from the other uh, channels. RTR, we don't have a, our own channel. We're piggybacking on SF. Uh, we have a limited broadcasting time um, and so much of that. Now, a little remark pro domo, uh, but important nonetheless, because it concerns plurilingualism, subtitles. Now, especially the Swiss Germans, uh, I don't want to hear, oh, your, your shows are really lovely, but we would rather like to understand them. All you need to do is you type, you go tele, under teletext, type in 777, and this is what you're going to get. You're going to have your German subtitles right there. Um, unfortunately, they're not available for anything on demand. Um, I'm going to skip the radio part, 18 uh, uh, channels. By the way, I don't... You actually, I mean, you all pay, uh, pay me through the license fee and BILAC. It's actually, <laughs> actually now you, you wouldn't have actually have had to pay to listen to me. But anyway, now, uh, Swiss Info, um, the fifth unit here. Uh, we've got nine different uh, editorial bureaus, as of this autumn, also Russian. Uh, and it's serving as a promo for Switzerland abroad, as well as a platform um, for, uh, for in general, uh, like for the Swiss living abroad. Uh, it summarizes newsworthy stuff for people who don't always have an answer set in their hand every day. Uh, and it's rather well liked in the social media. I copied the Arabic version right there. Now, to underpin and conclude this respect part, uh, I'm going to show you these two uh, graphics right here. On the one hand, you've got the linguistic ma makeup on the left-hand side, I should say. And this is amazing what you can see here. Two-thirds of Switzerland the Swiss-German part, they only get 47% of the cake of the, uh, S, uh, of the SBC's budget. And the Romans, who don't make up 1%, they get almost 2%. Uh, this is, as you can see, a lot of solidarity. So the respect part is in order, right? Uh, however, however, um, I'm referring to a, a media symposium which was held in Zurich last year. And the editor-in-chief, Lise Borne of uh, Radio DRS, she made the following comment with regards to Echo de Zeit, a very popular uh, show on DRS. She said, media coverage on Ticino and Romandie is competing against media coverage of the rest of the world. Ticino and Romandie tend to fall into the category rest of the world. Now, that's spot on. Uh, it's, it's, there's a lot of respect, but not an awful lot of interest vis-a-vis -vis the other parts of the country. Um, and it's not just that interest is lacking, it's also like general knowledge, uh, ignorance, simply. Uh, I was asked by my colleagues, so do you actually speak Romance at RTI? Yes, I say, yes, we do speak Romance. Just like Welsh speakers are perfect English speakers, we speak uh, German and, and Romance. And uh, we have our meetings in Romance, we write our reports in Romance, we gossip in Romance, everything is done in Romance. So let that, let's get this one straight. Um, now, there's more challenges, I'm afraid. Uh, this one's got his head in the sand, and this is uh, referring to the lack of language skills. In-house, it's difficult sometimes to fill certain positions, uh, and English as a lingua franca is also becoming ever more pr uh, prominent. I had my first meeting entirely held in English two weeks ago. Surprise for me. Um, also, there's the, uh, the audience. They, um, if you have multilingual programs, they, they will just channel hop, and they're just going to get to the next channel. Uh, so an RT-like channel was tried out in the 1990s, failed, because there, was, there wasn't an audience. Um, and, and also, you have the ever-same interview partners. Those Swiss Germans who speak perfect French, and vice versa. 
And also there's, now that refers to the lower uh, image at the bottom there, you've got different tastes, different perceptions. Uh, Luthien Blanc, which you may know, uh, was a roaring success, uh, well, roaring, but it was a success in the Swiss-German part, a flop in the Swiss, in Swiss Romande, uh, simply because uh, Luthien Blanc, the series of uh, chocolatier at uh, the language border, was considered to be too Swiss-German. Um, and it's true that the original version was in Swiss German, and so that doesn't really appeal to them. Had they put subtitles in there, maybe it would have remedied the situation. Um, and this is really what it boils down to, dubbed or sub subtitled. We could have a Scandinavian or a Dutch situation where almost everything is subtitled. This would be linguistic engineering, but I'm really convinced that this would help. Um, now, in the end, it boils down to this question. Uh, do we have to deliver service public or should we chase market share? Now, obviously, the North Korean newscaster here on the left and uh, Fox News anchor Tim O'Reilly, uh, it's, it's, it's to pro uh, provocate, obviously. Uh, but I am arguing that at present, the SBC is showing a lot of respect for the national languages, uh, but um, it's rather wanting when it comes to interest in the other regions uh, and also the usefulness of, of knowing other languages, at least in the, in the field of the media. And as I said, uh, um, the reluctance to use subtitles isn't exactly helping. Um, so there we go. Right, so basically the, the linguistic units are locking themselves voluntarily in. Right, now we are back to square one. Um, I actually wonder, who would I speak, to, uh, uh, who would I speak Romansh to? Uh, my my uh, grandmother or, uh, or a goat in the Alps? And this is exactly what it's, uh, what it's about. Um, Romansh also has its repertoire of personalities. You think of uh, the best co cross-country skier, Dario Colonia, he's a Romansh speaker, uh, or um, the CEO of Switzerland's third largest banking group, Raiffeisen, Pierin Vincenz, and so forth. Uh, so it's, we should move away from the typecasting of languages. Um, but more importantly, this presentation here has been about, or has, has been a plea for plurilingualism and multilingualism. And even though in Switzerland uh, there, there is plurilingualism and we kind of take it for granted, uh, it's not certain that this is going to stay like this forever. In the long run, the continuously growing rift between the linguistic regions is not helping the, the political situation, it's not helping the national cohesion. Um, now, in, this, in today's world, uh, English has most definitely its, its place. Uh, any internationally minded person has to speak it. But I argue that this shouldn't have to happen at the expense of other languages. Now, in the case of Switzerland, the four national languages. Now, we need to ensure that respect and interest prevail in the daily treatment of languages. And there we go, back to square one uh, once more. Um, and this is how we're going to ensure their usefulness. Okay, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Grazie fici per la vostra attenzione. Thank you. Thank you.